it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing my new book buzz video for October to December of this year. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I questioned myself there. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about um, lots of books that are being released in those three months that I'm particularly excited about. Uh, get the buzz going, you know, maybe you'll be excited about some of these as well and add them to your um, TBRs and your pre-order lists and things like that. Uh, so we're going to start off with the month of October, which has the most uh, books on the list that I've got to talk about, starting with um, the illustrated edition of J.K. Rowling's Tales of Beadle of the Bard, which is coming out on the 2nd of October. I cannot believe how many different editions of different things are coming out of the um, of all of the J.K. Rowling books at the moment. It's kind of hard to keep up with, to be honest. Um, but I said before on my channel I'm a bit of a sucker for it so um, I will obviously have to pick up a copy and it's people like me that make them bring out all of these things because of course there are Harry Potter fans up and down the country who are going to have to buy this to add to their collection so unfortunately or fortunately as the case may be I will be doing the same. <laughs> Um, next out on the 11th of October is Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zizak. I remember when I got the email through from Waterstones announcing this book just being gobsmacked by the fact that we were finally getting a new book from Marcus Zizak. Um, I have to say I haven't read his, is it his first one, yeah I am the messenger, but obviously The Book Thief is just such a modern favourite. Um, you know everybody loves it or you know most people that I know anyway so yeah when this email came through to say that um, he was finally releasing a new book I was so excited uh, so like I said this is called Bridge of Clay I'm just going to read you the little summary and um, it says five Dunbar brothers are living fighting loving grieving in the perfect chaos of a house without grown-ups today the father who left them has just walked right back in he has a surprising request who will build a bridge with him it is Clay, a, a boy tormented by a long buried secret he accepts. But why is Clay so broken and why must he fulfil this extraordinary challenge? Bridge of Clay is about a boy caught in a current, a boy intent on destroying everything he has in order to become everything that he needs to be. Ahead of him lies the bridge, the vision that will save both his family and himself. It will be a miracle and nothing less. So that sounds really, really interesting. The fact that they're living on their own reminds me a little bit of... Um, I don't know, I don't know why, The Cement Garden by Ian McEwan, and I have literally no idea why, because those two books are very, very different. Um, but, you know, the idea of building a bridge, is it going to kind of play on some metaphors there? That's kind of what it's uh, giving me the vibe of, so, uh, the vibe of, sorry, the vibe of, why can't I say those two words? The vibe of, there we go. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. The next one I've got on the list is called Pride and this is by Ibi Zoboy, I think that's how you pronounce that and this is coming out on the 18th of October and this is basically a retelling of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen but I believe it's set in Brooklyn in New York and it deals with issues to do with race and class and identity and gender and that sort of thing. So the cover's really, really interesting and I, I really like the idea of a retelling set in that kind of sense. So um, I have to get around to reading Pride and Prejudice first just because I think it, you know, if I've read the base text, I mean, I, I think I've read Pride and Prejudice before, but it's a bit hazy if I have. So I'd like to reread that one first, but I think this is a really interesting take on a retelling and definitely something that I'm interested in picking up. Next up is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. This is out on the 23rd of October and this is the final book in the Throne of Grass Throne of Grass Throne of Glass series, uh, which is a YA fantasy series that she's been writing for a number of years now. Um, and this is the final book, so it's book number seven is that right yeah i think it is so i have pre-ordered this already um i haven't read book number six which is tower of dawn so i still need to catch up on that uh but this is like i said the final book in the series and i'll be looking forward to how she wraps it all up uh next up in october i want to talk about uh the fact that they're releasing the graphic novel of to kill a mockingbird which is very very exciting this is out on the 30th of october and it's been um, adapted and illustrated by Fred Fordham. Um, so the artwork, from what I can tell on, on um, Amazon when I've looked at it so far, 
it's quite yeah it's got a nice color palette it's, it's quite childish is the wrong word but i don't know like yeah i can't really describe it but anyway it looks like it's going to be good um to kill a mockingbird is one of my favorite books of all time i think the fact that they're um repackaging it for perhaps a much um, younger audience or for uh, the new generation is a really really good idea i think lots more um lots more people should read it and experience it it's such an important story so um yeah i'll be looking forward to getting my hands on a copy of that definitely um, and then lastly for October, and also out on the 30th of October, is um, Jodie Picoult's latest book, which is called Spark of Light. Um, I do really like Jodie Picoult's writing. It's been a while since I've picked one, up one of her books, but there's been a lot of buzz going around about this particular um, new release of hers. And I'll just read you um, some of the summary for, from it. Um, the Centre for Women's Reproductive Health offers a last chance at hope, but nobody ends up there by choice. Its very existence is controversial, and to the demonstrators who barricade the building every day, the service it offers is no different from legalised murder. Now life and death decisions are being made horrifyingly real. A lone protester with a gun has taken the staff, patients and visitors hostage. Starting at the tensest moment in the negotiations for their release, a spark of light unravels backwards, revealing hour by urgent hour what brought each of these people. The gunmen, the negotiator, the doctors, nurses and women who have come to them for treatment to this point. Uncertainties unwind as truths and secrets are peeled away, revealing the complexity of balancing the right to life with the right to choose. That sounds absolutely fascinating. We all know that Jodie Picoult writes about some topics that are um, really important, but also really controversial is the wrong word but sort of like really up to the minute things that people have a lot of different ideas about um, and she's also very good at structuring her novels in such a way that you get a real sort of sense of things unfolding um, and I also really like her writing when um, she's sort of writing dramatic situations um, so for example um, 19 minutes is a good example of that I would definitely recommend that book from her um, but that just sounds absolutely fascinating and I can't wait to pick it up okay moving into November the first book that I want to talk about is called Let It Bang a young black man's reluctant odyssey into guns by RJ Young so this is a non-fiction book um, and this is about um, Young's uh, foray into only a gun for the first time so he married a white woman and in an attempt to kind of get to know his father-in-law a bit better and kind of I suppose uh, I don't know venture into his way of thinking um, his father-in-law gives him his first gun um, and so he learns how to use it and it's about how that moment changes his life um it sounds absolutely fascinating um and obviously it's going to delve into issues of um gun crime and gun violence and um, the nature of um of owning guns in the us and that sort of thing so off of the back of reading um gary young's another day in the death of america i think this will be a really really important one to kind of give me some more information on this topic um, then out on the 13th of November is Becoming by Michelle Obama which is her autobiography that's coming out um, I've mentioned that I've been excited about this one um, on my channel before and of course I've got to mention it here so like I said this is her autobiography that she's bringing out um, I'm not quite sure whether she's going to focus on a particular time in her life or whether she's going to, I think she's going to talk about her whole life, um, but I could be wrong about that. So yeah, I just really respect Michelle Obama as a person. Um, I respect what she's done with her life. Um, you know, whenever she speaks, she speaks with such, um, such eloquence and she's just so intelligent. And yeah, I just, I can't wait to, to read what she's got to say, basically. Okay, and the last bit that I want to talk about is a book that's coming out in December, and it's called uh, My Life in Ox My, No My Oxford Year, sorry, by Julia Whelan, and this is, I believe, a fiction novel about a character who goes to Oxford University. So I'll read you um, some of the summary. Um, gazing up at the dreaming spires of Oxford, American student Ella Duran can't believe it. She's finally arrived at Oxford University. A new life starts and not even Ella's handsome lecturer, Jamie Davenport, can distract her from her classes. 
but as the term goes on, Ella can't deny the growing attraction between them, an attraction that soon turns to love. And when Ella learns of Jamie's life-changing secret, their relationship becomes deeper than Ella could ever have, could have ever anticipated. As Ella's Oxford year draws to a close, she must decide whether the dreams she arrived with are the same ones with which she would leave. What originally drew me to this is the idea of the fact that she's going to Oxford University. I visited Oxford with my husband earlier this year and really, really loved the city, loved um, sort of exploring some of the university buildings and things like that, just getting caught up in that, that sort of atmosphere. Um, so the fact that it's set there and we're going to get some insight perhaps into, into Oxford University will be uh, really good. I'm just took the time to say. Yeah, so um, Julia Whelan um, graduated from um, Oxford University with a degree in English and creative writing. So obviously she's been to Oxford University so we've got that kind of insight into it. And then we've got a bit of a romance as well. But I don't know whether you'd classify this as a romance novel, whether you classify it as a contemporary novel. I'm not really sure at the moment, but I, I was really intrigued by it. And um, yes, yeah, so I've definitely added it to my TBR. So there you go, guys. They are all of the new books that are coming out that I'm particularly interested in. The end of the year tends to be a bit more um, lean when it comes to... Um, book releases that I'm particularly interested in. You get a, a kind of a lot of book releases that people buy for Christmas presents and stuff like that, you know, like um, compendiums and annuals and lots of autobiographies from and biographies from celebrities I'm not necessarily interested in, basically. Um, but, you know, not but not necessarily releases of books that I'm particularly interested in. So a bit leaner this time, but um, some really great books in there nonetheless. Um, I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Are there any books uh, that I didn't mention on the list that you're particularly interested um, in picking up when they come out over the next three months? I'd love to get some new ideas. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.